Hey everyone, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I have a really fun tutorial for you guys on doing some real time dynamic snow effects right inside of Blender. So recently where I live, we've been getting a lot of snow. And I'm, um, yeah, just a little bit excited as maybe you could tell. Well, anyways, this got me experimenting using Eevee and some particle systems along with some dynamic paint tools to create a real time dynamic snow effect with the snow actually affecting different objects in your scene and dynamically piling up on surfaces over time. This is an effect that I think could be really useful for a lot of you guys and it's just a ton of fun to play around with. So I'm really excited to share my secrets with you. But first I have something I wanna quick show you guys. This is the crazy amount of snow we already have and the first day of winter is still a week away. So while I'm out here, I wanted to quick thank Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Dashlane is a mobile and desktop app that speeds up everything you do online by safely securing all of your info like passwords, credit card, and personal information, and makes the internet a safe one-click autofill experience. Okay, this is freezing. I can't do this out here. So recently I actually had a scary personal issue where some of my accounts were hacked into and I had to work hard for a few days to recover those accounts back to normal. So Dashlane is actually what I'll be using myself now to keep my information more secure online while still having the convenience of quickly logging into accounts and using autofill. If you also want to get Dashlane, just use the link in the description below and it will be completely free on your first device. Plus you'll get a 30 day free trial of their premium version. No credit card info required. So go ahead and get it with that link in the description below. So here's a very basic scene that I've prepared to use our effects on. If you guys want to download this scene just with a few textures and the layout that I have here, you can do that in the description. Just an easier way to get you guys the HDR and the textures available in the scene. HDR is from hdrhaven.com and the textures are from textures.com. But just a very basic scene here to demonstrate this effect. So to start, we obviously need some falling snow. So I'm going to go ahead and give us a snowflake to work with. By shift right clicking over here, I'm going to add in an icosphere. So go shift A and add in a mesh. Icosphere and under the mesh settings that you can see over on the bottom left here I'm just gonna take the subdivisions down to one to make that a low poly uh, Little snowflake now we need an object to emit these particles to fall as snow So I'm just gonna put my cursor above our little scene here and go shift a and add in a plane We'll scale this up almost as large as our surface here by going to top view I'm just scaling it up until we're close to being as large as the plane below it and that will work just fine we can pull it down until it's just outside of camera view here. And as you can see, it's casting a shadow right now. If I give it a material and then down an EV, go down to the shadow mode and change it to none, we won't have any shadows being cast from that plane. So jumping over to the particle settings, I'm going to hit plus for a new particle system. I'm going to leave this on emitter and I'm just going to give myself a little bit more timeline here. So I want this to end in about 400 frames. So we have more time for our simulation to happen. And then I'm going to make the end frame here of our particle system to also be 400. And if I play it back right now, you can see we have those points falling. That's fine. I'm going to drop down the velocity setting here and take out the normal velocity. Just make that a zero so we don't have any velocity there. I'll give it a little bit of object velocity here by giving it a point two just to give the particle a little bit different of a starting speed. And we'll give it a little bit of randomization by giving that a point two as well. Now we're gonna to wanna to choose undo render. We're gonna choose render as object. And that object is going to be that icosphere we added in right there. Right now those particles are really tiny. So we're gonna go ahead and scale them up a little bit. So we have some nice chunky snowflakes for our scene just for a demonstration purpose. And we'll give it some scale randomness too, about a 0.5. As you can see, they're falling a bit too fast for my liking. So under the physics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bunch of Brownian motion. This is basically perfect for snow. Brownian motion is going to give them sort of a weird sort of falling pattern. They'll have sort of their own momentum to them. And by giving this about a 12, this will just kind of give them more of that snowflake where one will be going one direction, the other will be going the other direction, and it'll look really cool. Perfect for snowflakes. I'm also going to give it a little bit of dampening. We'll go about a 0.25, so they're falling a little bit slower. And you can kind of see that effect that I'm going for. Maybe we'll just make that a point two. Now all we have to do is adjust the lifetime so these snow particles are lasting past our plane there. So scrolling up to the lifetime, I'm just gonna make this last about 70 frames. And you can see that allows the particles to fall through the floor there, which is perfect. Maybe make it just a little bit more to make sure they're all making it to the ground. We'll go ahead and make that a 75 and that will be perfect. So there's our falling snow. Now let's have the snow affect our surface. So this object, like I said, is just set up very basic with two textures now. So I'm gonna split my window here and open up a shader editor so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. And as you can see here, I have a very basic material set up on our mesh. Two principled shaders plugged into a mix shader. And the top one, if I control shift click it, you can see it's just a mixture of grass and snow. 
and the bottom one is just straight snow. It's basically a white material. And these two different shaders are controlled with a simple mix shader that I can control the amount of one or the other. And we're gonna use this in combination with some dynamic paint to tell Blender which areas we want to be the bottom and which one we want to be the top. And I'll start off by selecting our particle system here, dropping down to the physics tab here. So let's make that a little bit bigger. And we're gonna add dynamic paint. This will be a brush, so change the type over to brush and then add brush. For the paint color, we want it to be white. So under RGB, we'll just give it full RGB. And then it's gonna be the paint source. It's gonna be the particle system. So choose particle system. We'll select the particle settings right there. And then under the size here, we're gonna to have to go for a very small size. So I'm gonna go 0 0.06. You don't actually wanna use the particles radius because that's way too large I found and I couldn't get it to uh, act as I wanted. And so there's the dynamic paint settings for our snowflakes. Now we wanna change the paint settings on our canvas here that the snow will be affecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another dynamic paint here. This time leaving it as canvas, I'm just gonna go add canvas. And we're gonna leave the format as vertex and the surface type as paint, as this is going to be vertex painting our scene. So that's all perfect. We wanna uncheck dry. And then under output, go ahead and we can delete a wet map. We don't need a wet map in this case for snow. And we're just gonna click that plus key to add in this paint map right here. And if I go over to our node editor here, and I'm just going to add right up here, a shift A, input attribute node. And all I have to do now is type out this exact paint map layer up into the attribute node. So I'm gonna go ahead and go DP underline paint, just as we have there map. And now if I go control shift click, you can see that this is painting with that attribute node perfectly. It's adding the, uh, the color to our floor as it hits it. The flakes are kind of big, and that is just due to the size of resolution of your scene. If I wanted to subdivide this more, I could make those flakes even smaller, but you have to know that it's going to get a lot slower in your viewport the more subdivisions you're dealing with. So I'm gonna leave this at a little bit of an unrealistically large size just so I can keep the real-time performance for this video. But as you might have guessed, this color is going to be affecting the mix shader here. So go ahead and drop the color into the color of the mix shader and then connect the mix shader up to your output. And if we jump to the beginning here and start playing through, you'll see when the snow hits the ground, it's now changing the color of the ground to be snow. And that's perfect. We're having the snow affect our ground and change the color. That's one step. The next step is going to be making it change the displacement of the ground so it starts piling up and growing in scale. So with our canvas here, floor still selected, we're gonna go up to the surfaces here and click that plus key and add in a new surface. This one, we're gonna scroll down and change from paint over to displace. Choosing displace is gonna allow it to change the normal. Now we wanna change the displace factor to actually a negative value. So we're gonna go negative 0.2. That'll be a nice amount of displacement. And we also wanna choose incremental. This will allow it to add on top of the displace so it grows and grows and grows and keeps growing. We also might wanna give it a few sub steps just for a cleaner simulation here. And that is basically all you have to do now. That is very simple. And when we play it back now, you'll see that they hit the ground. It is also displacing the ground. As you can see, we start having these piling up and you have these little bumps forming everywhere. The snowflakes are hitting the ground. So now to see this in full effect, let's go ahead and grab our particle system and just add another zero to our emitter settings here. So jumping over to the particle settings, I'm gonna make this 10,000 snowflakes and we'll just see what this does when it hits the ground. And ba -da boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom. And now you can see as the snow falls with 10,000 of them, it's piling up really quickly and it's actually working really well. Our entire scene is now being overcome by snow. And this is pretty cool, but there's a few things that we might wanna change to make this even better. So you can see it's affecting the tree in the inside too, as those particles are going right through it and affecting it at different points inside the tree. We also don't want that. So what I'm gonna do now that we have the particle settings applied is I'm gonna tab into edit mode on our mesh here. I'm gonna hit L to select this square and then L to select our little pine tree. And I'm going to go P and separate by selection. If I tab out of edit mode, I can select the floor and I can select the trees here. What this allows me to do now is having these on a separate object, I can jump over to our physics settings again here, and this time add a collision to it. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom, I can collapse the dynamic paint there. You can see we have some collision settings, and I'm just gonna choose kill particles, and then also give it a little bit of permeability. This is basically the chance that the particle could fall through the mesh, and I found that giving it a little bit of a higher value actually gives you better results. So go ahead and crank that up to about a 0.5. So with that set up though, now you can see that as the snow falls, and hits the tree, 
it that kills that particle that hit the tree and so you don't have nearly as much snow piling up on the inside of the tree and it's kind of hanging to the outer branches which is a bit more realistic of course this would be higher resolution if we wanted to subdivide more but we're only getting about 10 to 11 fps and i don't want to kill that anymore you can see something like our red material here though doesn't have that material applied to it so what we would do for this is we just grab the material choose material one which is the one being affected by the snow and then hitting that button right there to make it its own unique material and then you can just change this and disconnect the texture here and since this is a unique material now we can go ahead and make this a red color and that would be working as a separate material. Now, the one thing we can do to make the snow look even a little bit better is give it a little bit of subsurface material. So go ahead and grab, connect the color to the subsurface color there. We'll give it about a 0.8 subsurf, and then under the subsurface radius, we're just gonna take these all to be about a 0.4. So as I said, this texture came from textures.com, and it comes with a few displacement maps. So you can go ahead and duplicate this. We'll go Shift A and add in a vector normal map. Go ahead and connect that to the normal on the snow principled shader. And then with this texture, we're just gonna go ahead and open up the normal map that came with this file, connect the color to the color of the normal map, and then set this to non-color, and obviously connect up the vector here as well. And then just doing the same thing for that roughness map, connecting it to the roughness on the snow principal shader here. You can see that that gives our snow a little bit more of a nice looking material. Might wanna take the normal mapping down just a little bit. The last thing I wanna mention is for a little bit more realistic snowfall, we could add a little bit of rotation to these snowflakes by going to the particle settings here, scrolling down to rotation, enable rotation, and then dropping down to that checkbox, we're gonna enable dynamic. And then with dynamic enabled, we can give it a little bit of angular velocity. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a one on the angular velocity. And this will allow for some rotation in those falling snowflakes. Also, if I increase the randomization there of the rotation that they start at, that just gives us a little bit of random rotation, maybe increase that even more. So we have a little bit more of those spinning sort of particles falling. And then in Eevee here, what makes this look really nice is if you grab the camera and add just a little bit of depth of field by enabling depth of field right there. Something like that, playing around the settings a little bit to get the focus set right, looks pretty cute. Now there's one other way that I want to show you guys how you can deform the mesh here and that's by actually adding like footsteps into the snow so kind of the opposite of the snow falling and to do that i'm just going to demonstrate it by going shift right click to put my cursor up there and then going shift a and adding in a uv sphere then i'm going to give the same material as the red material there then check that box there and change the color over to a blue material so we can differentiate it and then i'll right click and shade smooth so to do that i'm going to grab our canvas here go over to our physics settings here i want to add in one more surface this is again going to be a vertex surface and i'm going to go ahead and increase the sub steps here to about a two and i'm going to change it to displace as well so what i'm going to have to do on this surface is use brush collections because if i had this setting set up to take away mesh here this would also have the snow taking away the mesh as they're both using the same settings right now. So what I'm actually gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to grab the particle system here. I'll also grab that icosphere and go control G to create a new group. And as you might be able to see behind my head here, we have a group pop up and you can go ahead and just name that something, something like snow. And now if we grab the surface here and under the surface settings here, go ahead and give that the brush collection that we just created, snow on both of these surfaces, not the last one we added, but both the other ones. Now on the last one we added, we're gonna go ahead and grab our sphere here Go control G one more time, and this one will name something like ball. And now on the last surface here, we wanna go ahead and grab the brush collection ball because this one we want the ball to be affecting. Now I'm gonna leave the displacement at one, and we don't want this to be incremental. We just want it to deform it when we hit the mesh. And now all I have to do is with the ball selected, give it dynamic paint as well. This is going to be a brush, of course. We're gonna add brush. And the type of brush is gonna be the mesh volume as we already have it set up right there by default. So now all I have to do is play the simulation back. And with the ball selected, if I grab it and start hitting that mesh, you're gonna see that it's starting to deform it everywhere the ball moves. And that's really cool if you want something to like a person to be walking through and kind of disforming the snow as it's going. And this again is just a ton of fun to play with. You can create some pretty cool looking simulations. This is just another way that you can use this as a snow effect, kind of bury your ball in snow then. And it looks pretty cool. But that's gonna finish up this tutorial, guys. Hope you had fun creating some real-time snow effects inside of Blender's EV render engine, all happening in real time with some dynamic effects. It's a ton of fun to make. I hope you guys had some fun watching it and learned something. Thanks again to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Definitely check them out with the link in the description below. And I'll see you guys all in a future video. Have a good, happy holiday, and bye-bye.